Let's talk about a biome that is inhospitable to cancer. It's not really inviting cancer. Number one, it has few areas of focal hypoxia. It has few areas of the body that are deprived of oxygen. The second thing is we don't have an environment that is very acidic. The other thing is we can talk about removing the unnecessary assault on our cellular biology. So things like... I don't want to put words in your mouth, but it sounded like fasting is great for <clears throat> fighting and or preventing cancer. No question. How so? Well, because um, everyone listening to this podcast at some point in their lifetime, whether you've had cancer or not, has had cancer cells in your body. All cancer has the same origin. It was at one time a healthy cell, right? So it is a liver cell, lung cell, pancreatic cell, uh, you know, a brain cell. Um, that cell's metabolism shifted, right? So it, it went from a healthy metabolism, which is usually using oxygen um, and to produce an energy source called ATP, spitting out carbon dioxide, healthy cellular metabolism. It's eliminating waste, it's repairing, it's, you know, it's detoxifying, it's regenerating, you know, it's replicating. So that was at one time a healthy cell. Something happened to that cell that shifted its metabolism to being sick, if you will. It shifts to a different source of energy. Um, it uses sugar, um, it uses acid, um, it creates acid as a, as, a, as a byproduct. And so why is it that we think that a, a healthy cell can become a sick cell? Well, we don't think a sick cell can become a healthy cell. Mm. Um, and so, you know, the theory is that once a cell that was healthy now becomes sick, the only way to fix this cell is to kill this cell. Um, now, very often, there are forms of cancer that have um, uh, uh, what's called a DNA mismatch, where the where the immune system actually recognizes uh, the cancer as a as a foreign body, and it and it begins to wage war on it. This is the whole basis for something called immunotherapies. Um, we've had a lot of clients, and again, I am not a physician, and I'm not an oncologist, so I want to make that perfectly clear, and I'm not recommending that you just fast if you have cancer, although I am recommending if you have cancer, you should fast, maybe not just only fast. Um, but in the body, we can create an environment that's very hospitable for cancer. We can create an environment that's very inhospitable to cancer. So let's talk about a biome that is inhospitable to cancer. It's not really inviting cancer. Number one, it has few areas of Focal hypoxia, it has few areas of the body that are deprived of oxygen. Healthy circulation, movement, sunlight, things like red light therapy. So we have healthy circulation, we have healthy levels of, of, of oxygen in the blood. The second thing is we don't have an environment that is very acidic. You know, the pH range of the blood is very narrow. So about a half a point. As you get more towards the lower end of that scale, you get more acidic. As you get the higher end of that scale, you get more alkaline. We know that alkaline environments tend to be disease-free environments. Acidic environments tend to be disease-prone um, um, environments. Um, the other thing is we can talk about removing the unnecessary assault on our cellular biology. So things like pesticides, herbicides, glyphosates, insecticides, preservatives. So eating whole foods in their natural format, avoiding things like seed oils. Um, and if you still don't believe the research on seed oils, Paul Saladino just did a great short documentary on it. Um, Dr. McCall has done lots of exposés on seed oils. The evidence on seed oils is absolutely valid, even though you will see that NIH research says that that um, these polyunsaturated fatty acids are not bad for you and you should be eating Wesson oil and corn oil and canola oil and safflower oil and sunflower oil and all of these seed oils that are highly toxic to our cellular biology. And, and very often, it's not even the, it's not even the, um, uh, the origin of the seed itself, like a rape seed or a canola, which is the same thing, um, or a sunflower or safflower seed. What we do is we, we take these canola plants or rapeseed plants, we put them in a commercial press, and the, and the, the oil comes out very gummy. So we degum it with something called hexane, which is a neurotoxin. Then we take that neurotoxic degummed oil and we heat it to 405 degrees and we turn it rancid. Okay, so now you have a putrefied rancid oil. So then we have to deodorize it. So we deodorize it with sodium hydroxide, 
which is a known carcinogen. And then we, in some cases, will even bleach it, then bottle it, then put it on the shelf. So it's sometimes, it's not even the food, it's the distance from the food to the table. So if you're listening to this, I would make today the day you get seed oils completely out of your diet. It's very hard to do. Sunflower, safflower, canola, rapeseed, and I would replace those with four or five different oils. If you're cooking, use coconut oil, which can take high temperatures. Use um, grass-fed or ghee butter or, or uh, tallow. All of those can are stable at high temperatures. And then at room temperature, use either an avocado oil or uh, an extra virgin olive oil. Those are the only fats and oils you need in your house. You can make everything with those. You can cook everything with those. You're safe. They're from nature. And they don't denature at, at high temperatures. When you take these seed oils and you put them in deep fryers and you start frying foods in these, you get all kinds of carcinogenic compounds that just spike inflammation in the body. And so, um, so you know, I would, if, if, you're, if you're listening to this, I mean, I would make seed oils one of the, one of the things that you tap water and seed oils get out of your life and your inflammatory cascade will come down in your body. I'll start doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate to sound like such a fear monger, but the truth is, you know, because we started this whole conversation about evolution is it's the fear is just trying to get back around the system to get back to the basics, right? That's, that's what it is. There, there's a lack of fear in whole foods and the basics. Fruits, vegetables, meat, fish, chicken, eggs from whole food sources. When we take those things and put them through the industrial process before they hit the table, this is where, this is where things go wrong, right? Um, I mean, cattle are not meant to eat soybean oil and high fructose corn syrup. Um, they don't encounter these things in, in nature. They don't take steroids. They don't take antibiotics. They don't get vaccinated. But when we, when you look at commercial feedlots, if you've ever seen an aerial picture of a commercial feedlot, there is not one blade of grass on the ground. Those cattle are standing in four inches of mud and I'm not kidding, you just Google it, you'll see images of these. Thousands and thousands of acres, as far as the eye can see, they're standing in, in, in mud. Very often they're, they're, they're eating um, uh, grains, which they don't encounter. Um, they're eating soybean, they're eating, uh, and even in some cases, high fructose corn syrup. Sometimes their teeth are rotted all the way up to the gum by the time they're slaughtered. Lots of them are dying of type two diabetes right before they're slaughtered. Um, and so, but if you take a cow and it's on a pasture and it's eating six or eight different varieties of grass and cloves, and it's eating the grass from the top down where the most nutritious part of the, uh, of the plant is, and it's living for six or seven or eight years before it's slaughtered, and it's a full-grown um, uh, animal. These are highly nutritious whole food sources um, instead of the, the, you know, the commercially processed versions of these. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.